Hi, this is Victor Cruz, Super Bowl champion, New York Giants, and I gotta get my ICTV. Hello everyone and welcome back to Inside Iona. This is our second season, so we're excited to be back here in the studio and bringing you the latest. That's right, Kyle. We're glad to be back and continuing to keep you all updated with Iona events, sports, and entertainment. So here's a look at what's happening inside Iona. The college was involved in a bias incident involving a note to a faculty member. We spoke to Provost and Senior Vice President Dr. Mark Caselica about this developing story. Improvements were made to the campus infrastructure. We will explain some of the upgrades to Iona's facilities and informational technology. Iona alum Pat Quinn talked to Inside Iona about his battle with ALS. We'll share some highlights in my interview with Quinn later in the broadcast. And Iona remembers the falling gales and first responders who passed away 13 years ago during the horrible tragedies of 9-11. And of course, stay tuned for Anthony Carlo's Icy Gales Sports Report and Maral Kathwari's Entertainment Spotlight. All this and more in this episode of Inside Iona. begin today's show with a developing story. According to a campus communique that was emailed to the Iona community, the college has been informed of an alleged bias incident involving a note given to a faculty member. Inside Iona spoke to Provost Dr. Mark Caselica to find out exactly what happened. Uh, we received a report that a faculty member had been left a very brief message that could be interpreted as having some bias contact. The faculty member uh, reported it to the department chair who notified it, the administration. We took the report very seriously. Uh, we reviewed the matter and we also contacted local authorities because we care about any member of our community who might be the target of a bias and right now local authorities are looking into the matter. We want to assure everybody here at Iona that we care deeply about everybody's well-being and if anybody ever is in a situation where they feel they're the target of bias, even if they think it's potential bias and they're not sure, please feel free to contact the college. Members of the community are encouraged to report an incident of bias to ombudsperson Tremaine Grimes, Iona's Campus Safety and Security, or the anonymous whistleblower hotline. The contact for these can be found at the bottom of your screen. In December, the college received a much sought after accreditation for the MA program in Communication Science and Disorders through the Speech Communication Studies Department. As a part of the accreditation requirements, Iona needed to expand its clinical space. Iona was able to relocate the Speech, Language, and Hearing Clinic to the former elementary school building at Holy Family Church. Professor Maria Armiento Di Maria is director of the Iona College Speech, Language, and Hearing Clinic. What we offer here is an on-site teaching clinic for our undergraduate and graduate students majoring in speech language pathology. And we offer this on-site clinic so that way they have an opportunity to work with patients or clients that have speech language or communication disorders and delays. We offer adult services, we offer services for children individual services, group services. Um, we range from kids as young as two to adults all the way up to, you know, in their 80s. And we have the opportunity to provide services um, for many different um, speech and language issues, such as if somebody had a stroke or if a child has had uh, an articulation uh, delay, we're able to offer those services here. On March 8, 2013, Iona alum Pat Quinn's life changed when he was diagnosed with ALS. Quinn was a jump starter in the latest social media craze called the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. This challenge has received attention from everyone ranging from movie stars, professional athletes, and even former U.S. presidents. 
I had the pleasure of talking with the brave fighter himself about his battle with ALS. So tell me how the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge began. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. We, we knew it was going around for other causes, but we didn't have the, uh, I don't know, we weren't just on top of it enough to mm -hmm. start it on our own. We noticed the family in Pelham, uh, Anthony Sinertia has had ALS for about 12 years now, and his wife did it for him. And they're from Pelham, and it's a little smaller town than where I'm from in Yonkers. So when we saw it, we just decided, let's, let's give this a shot. And we really blasted our family, our friends. I think we had 40 or 50 people do it right away. And they nominate people, and before you knew it, within 48 hours, my entire Facebook news feed was just, it was, it was crazy. So how does that feel to have, in spe specifically, the, the entire Iona College community do these ice bucket challenges in your name? And by the way, I was probably one of the first people at Iona to do it because your cousins who are sitting over there, uh, Kara and Megan, nominated me. Yeah, Kara and Megan have been tremendous supporters, and Iona was a great time for me. I played rugby. I loved it. Uh, Bruce McLean is the new coach. He's been mm -hmm. beyond supportive. The fellows, I, I go, I'm really eager to meet them. I heard they just pretty much ran over Fordham, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm eager to meet them, but the entire Iowa community has been awesome. They have been from the beginning. Mm -hmm. To watch my entire interview with Pat, visit our YouTube page, Iona College TV. A new policy is being put in place for online testing and distance learning in hybrid courses by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. They have mandated that all accredited institutions verify the identity of students registered for taking online exams in distance learning and hybrid courses. In order to do this, Iona will use a national proctor service called ProctorU to proctor online exams. However, this policy has created controversy within the student body because students will have to pay a fee to use ProctorU. Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Mark Caselica, postponed the online proctoring for the semester and is seeking input from the student body based on their concerns. Uh, ProctorU was prompted by uh, a new requirement from accreditation bodies to make sure that you have proctoring for your online exams. As, as most people know, there's been an explosion of online slash distance education in recent years. And accrediting bodies uh, have been concerned about the issue of whether or not students enrolled in courses are the people who are actually taking exams when they're doing them online. So they've been requiring colleges and universities to develop some sort of system for proctoring exams. Shortly after we announced that we were going to implement ProctorU, uh, a number of students had contacted the, the administration of college, some through the Student Government Association, some directly to us. And they let us know about a number of concerns. Some students were concerned that there were fees attached to using this service. Uh, other students were concerned about technical aspects of, of using ProctorU. And when we heard these concerns, uh, the college made a decision to delay the implementation. We felt that um, until the students' concerns were adequately addressed that it didn't make sense to rush forward, even though we do want to, as soon as possible, respond to these accreditation uh, requirements. This September 11th marked the 13th anniversary of the devastating attacks at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. The Iona community gathered outside of Ryan Library to commemorate the lives of 17 Iona alumni, including two first responders who died on that tragic day. Today is a really important day for Iona College, and um, even though it's 13 years ago that these 15 alums passed away, uh, the pain doesn't go away and uh, we need to gather in solidarity for, for those who continue to suffer. Um, it's important for us to remember too that this is a national day of service and it's our tradition at Iona that um, in our suffering uh, we respond and we respond in acts of service and acts of justice. That's the tradition that, that Edmund Rice set out for us that's the tradition of the Gospels. That's the tradition of Iona College. So um, it's important for us to remember, to gather, to remember this, and to be there uh, 
for those who continue to mourn. Continuing with the 9-11 Remembrance, Iona students gathered on the Mazzello Field for an event called Handprints for Heroes. This event was sponsored by Residential Life. Hi, my name is Mario Rodriguez. I'm an RA in 766 Eastchester, and tonight I'm hosting the program Handprints for Heroes to pay tribute to the 9-11 attack. I'm Monica Chesby. Um, I'm an RA of South Hall this year. Um, so right now we're at the 9-11 Memorial Service event, also Handprints for Heroes. Um, all the RAs gathered and decided that we wanted to do this event again this year because we did it last year and it was so successful. Um, so each person fills out a little um, handprint. We write Never Forget. We write about memories of people that we've had from 9-11. Um, and it's just a really great time for all the residents to come together and bond over this um, memorial service. Dr. Janetta Betch Cole was the keynote speaker for this year's Rudin Driscoll Visiting Professorship Lecture. Her presentation was titled The Pedagogical Case for Diversity and Inclusion in American Higher Education. Dr. Cole is director of Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of African Art and a former president of Spelman College. I'm John Edebet Cole. I am really quite honored and pleased to be here at Iona College. Issues of diversity, making this campus even more diverse in terms of students and faculty and staff and administrators. Because we know that when we bring different folk to the table, they bring new ideas, different ideas, innovative ideas. And we reach that point where difference doesn't make so much difference. It's a new year with new beginnings. Inside Iona reporter Cassie Lina hit the campus to find out the goals students have for this year. Hi, I'm here on Iona's campus today for the 2014-2015 academic year. I'm asking students what they're hoping to accomplish this year and what they're looking forward to most. Hi, I'm looking forward to and very excited to join to meet a bunch of the Iona Gale students. To learn some new stuff and make a lot of friends. I'm looking forward to getting an internship. And I'm looking forward to being part of Fashion Club and International Business Club. I'm excited for homecoming and all the basketball games. I want to get straight A's this year, make my mom proud. And I'm excited to join a sorority, maybe like new clubs, and get to know everyone on campus and have a good freshman year. For ICTV, I'm Cassie Lina. Back to you in the studio. Now here's Anthony Carlo with your IC Gale Sports Report. Hi, I'm Anthony Carlo with your Iona Gale Sports Report. Well, fall sports are in full swing, and the Iona College men's soccer team, despite coming out of the gate slowly, picked up a win against Fairleigh Dickinson to move to 2-3-1 and one on the season. We pick it up in the 26th minute. Fairleigh Dickinson was called for a foul in the box, and senior midfielder Ignacio Maganto successfully netted the penalty kick to put the Gales on the board. It was Maganto's third goal of the young season. Now in the 74th minute, the Gales added some insurance with a little help from their opponent. Senior midfielder Michael Holzer put a shot on goal that was accidentally knocked in by a fairly Dickinson defender for an Iona score. The Maroon and Gold would hold on for the two-zip win. As for the girls, they've been in a bit of a slide of late. That slide began with a loss at home to the Bryant University Bulldogs. Our Ian Sachs was there. Ian? Ian Sachs here at Mazella Field where the Iona College women's soccer team fell to the Bryant University Bulldogs 2-1. The Gales got on the board first when freshman forward Charlotte Stewart netted her third goal of the year. But two minutes later, Bryant equaled the score. We didn't come out with the right mindset for the entire game. There was moments when we played with intensity and played to win. And then there were moments when we just dropped off, and I think it was from different individuals at different times. Although the Gales outshot the Bulldogs 15-13, to they ultimately fell when Bryant got the game-winning goal in the 73rd minute. Gales head coach Linda Hathorne states inconsistencies as the reasons for the team's failure. You have to be ready to bleed maroon and gold every single time you set on the, step on the field. It's not something that you can fake. You have to be willing to die to get the result you want. You just have to be better at, at playing our game and playing it for 90 minutes. The maroon and gold dropped to 3-3 three and three on the season. They will be back in action Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. when they host Fordham at Mazella Field. 
For North Avenue Nation, I'm Ian Sachs. Thanks, Ian. Following the loss, the Gales continued the homestand with another heartbreaking loss to Fordham 1-0 and then hit the road only to be clobbered 5-1 at Hartford. In volleyball, the Maroon and Gold split this past weekend with a win against Hartford and a loss against LaSalle. The Gales took it to Hartford in three sets with Katrina Warren leading the charge. The veteran had 13 kills, 5 blocks, 4 digs and 2 aces. Taylor Sembalisti added some firepower with 12 kills and 12 digs for her second double-double of the season. Against LaSalle, Iona lost the first two sets by two points, but they rallied for a clutch 25-20 win in the third set. The fourth set went back and forth until LaSalle hung on for a 36-34 win. In NFL news, the Minnesota Vikings have caved under public pressure as Adrian Peterson has been put on the exempt commissioner's permission list, which will ban their star running back from all team activities until legal matters are settled. Peterson, of course, was indicted on child abuse charges after it was discovered that he abused his four-year-old son by whipping him. The Vikings organization originally backed Peterson, just sitting him for one game and allowing him to get right back on the field. But after receiving a lot of heat for that choice on the heels of the Ray Rice domestic violence incident, they've decided to change their mind. This is Anthony Carlo with your Iona Gale Sports Report. I'll see you next time. September 9th was the annual fall convocation held in the Christopher J. Murphy Auditorium. Two endowed department chairs were the recipients of a new Iona tradition, which was the presentation of actual chairs with their names engraved to signify their endowment. This year's recipients were Dr. Elena Picario Foley, Chair of the Religious Studies Department and Director of Jewish Catholic Studies, and Dr. Sung Hee Lee, Chair of the Chemistry Department. Dr. Marcus Elka was a keynote speaker at this year's convocation, and the title of his address was Helping Iona Students to Succeed, Challenges and Strategies for a Catholic College in an Era of Diverse Millennials. One of the messages is that as a provost, I felt an obligation to kind of take stock of where we were as an institution, particularly around academic matters. And what I discovered as a result of doing that is uh, in several key respects, we're actually headed in a very good direction. We also are moving forward with initiatives that are responsive to what society is demanding of us, that, that we increase retention rates, graduation rates, and so forth. Uh, the last thing I did in this presentation was to discuss some areas that I feel as provost could be a particular focus uh, for enhancement, such as how can we address diversity matters, how can we um, create a coherent vision for our global engagement, and last but not least, how can we support the faculty scholar model here at the college. MassCom professor Mike Demurgis took his on-camera presence special topics class to City Field where they had the opportunity to get advice from sports reporters about what it's like to work in the industry. I was a part of the group of students that went on that field trip. Here's a short clip of what we reported from the field. Good afternoon. This is a special edition of ICTV News live from City Field. I'm Chrissy Bookie. First up with news, Mayor de Blasio is putting more cameras on the intersection of traffic lights. The reaction from my own students was mixed. I do think that these lights will be an advantage for us here um, in New York. So I do think that they do need to be added. I'm pretty neutral about it. I think it's good in one point. I think it's bad at the other. The mayor is hoping that with more cameras on the top of traffic lights, there will be less car accidents. Hi, this is Stephen Pierce here with Rockies outfielder Michael Kadire. Michael, last time you came off the DL this year, you hit for the cycle. Last night when you came off the DL, the 15-day DL, you hit a home run in your first at bat. Can we expect a little more from you this night? <laughs> Hopefully just getting on the field is good. You know, you mentioned uh, I was only able to come back for one day and then I went back on the disabled list. So it's been a frustrating year. Um, but, you know, you just got to continue to persevere. We still have 18 games left, and, you know, I'd like to make something out of, of, of those 18 games, both individually and try to win as many games as we can. Well, that wraps up a great field trip brought to us by the MassCom Department. For more that's happening at Iona College, visit North Avenue Nation. For ICTV, I'm Chrissy Bookie. As you might have noticed, the facilities management and informational technology staffs have been very busy with a number of projects on campus this summer. Many are related to the Campus Facilities Master Plan, which is part of the college's strategic plan. 
Anne-Marie Scaccini Lynch, Senior Vice President for Finance and Administration, and Joanne Steele, Vice Provost for Informational Technology, explain what some of the projects include. Um, it was really exciting over here. Um, the facilities group was very busy. We redid the steps on Cornelia. Uh, we actually started a collaborative classroom in Murphy 132, so with movable desks to make it a better learning environment. Uh, we did some dining improvements, added a new concept chicken grill. In the fall of next year, we'll have a full service Starbucks in La Penta, which previously housed um, the Quiznos. Some other additional campus-wide improvements were the Aragoni Center restoration. The building was um, restored to its original splendor. We um, upgraded the pool by changing the lining and doing some changes around the pool. We um, are looking at LED lighting from a sustainability perspective. We're changing all the lights, light bulbs, and we're looking at the generators. We're going to be upgrading the generators on campus. Um, in October, we will have a food truck on campus. So we're following the latest trends, um, and we'll have a contest to name the food truck. But the food truck will go from spot to spot across campus, have late night hours, so it'll be a convenient location for our students to go. And of course, um, you can use your cards. This year's work included upgrading the technology in numerous classrooms on campus, updating the wireless infrastructure, updating the servers for the Blackboard learning system that students rely on, as well as numerous upgrades in the Hagen School of Business. So the data center is the hub of everything that we do in IT. In the notification that you received from the president, it talks about IT infrastructure. The data center has security, has sensors, has cameras, has cooling systems, and is a very complex place to manage. So this is the new wireless system that was installed this summer. It's from uh, Alcatel and Aruba Networks. It controls all the student wireless, all the student phones, uh, not, we also added uh, gaming and TV on the network this year, so students can uh, put on their Xboxes, PlayStation, Smart TVs. So what happens is um, when, a new pro when a new device comes on a network, this device checks it first. So it gets registered here, and then it passes the traffic along to our wireless controllers right here. And that sends the traffic. These controllers control all of our access points on the, on the campus. Uh, in addition to the data center upgrades and the infrastructure upgrades, we did upgrades in the Hagen School of Business, including a new conference center where students can video in from any place in the world and join our classes. This expands the Hagen School of Business across the globe, so we could have students from any place, if they're traveling, sign in through their computer and interactively take part of the class. In addition to all of that, we did a number of upgrades in the classrooms that many of our undergraduates use. So there are document cameras, new computers, new podiums, and interactive whiteboards. September is Suicide Awareness Month, and you may have noticed that the Hagen Clock Tower was lit purple. This was for an event to support suicide awareness called Fears vs. Dreams. Students gathered in the end zone to write down their biggest fear and greatest dream in life, followed by a photo shoot and balloon release on Mozilla Field. Student Campus Minister Ali Lucio hosted the event and got the Hagen Clock Tower to be lit purple for the occasion. My name is Ali Luiso and this is the Remind Me Who I Am event in honor of Suicide Awareness Month. It's been a major goal of mine to have the tower lit up purple for Suicide Awareness Month and I can finally say that I made that dream come true. Something that we're really utilizing and really saying a lot of is I am a living story and I won't give up. So I think that's a really important statement because we want people to know that they should never give up on their story and who they are. And then we also have bracelets that say, no one else can play your part. I just want to thank everyone who came out tonight. It really means so much to me um, to have all of this support from all of my friends um, and just the Iona community in general. And I just want everyone to know that they mean so much to not just me, but everyone here tonight. This summer, a group of 20 Argentinian students from a private high school in La Plata, Argentina came to Iona for a two-week media camp. The camp focused on four disciplines in the mass communication fields, broadcasting, journalism, public relations, and advertising. My experience here has been unforgettable. I have been here for two weeks, and it's the best travel I have ever had. 
Uh, I have learned journalism, advertising, broadcast, but the weather that I have here was the people, the cultures, I learned a lot about them. And the professors are the best. And we, we played two football matches with the Students. With the student, Iona College students, uh, all we won, students, we won both of them because yes, we because are we from are Argentina. Yes, I, you know we are so we are good. The best. Yes. we love having here. We love staying here. I yes. mean, it's that great. was an amazing, a great experience. Also, and, the food, the food is great. Yes, and we want. Yes, I know. <laughs> and we want to to repeat this experience. <laughs> Colegio Lincoln. Media camp at Iona College was a wonderful experience. Uh, here I could realize that being a journalist is what I want to be in the future um, because we did uh, workshops like writing about uh, a baseball game that we went to and also we went to a printing plant from the New York Times and it was great because that is what I want to be and what I like. And also, Iona College made me feel like I'm home, and it was a great experience for me. It's time for Moral Kathwari's entertainment report. Moral? Thanks, Kyle and Chrissy. We're only a month into school, and it's already a busy start of the semester at Iona. To welcome back Gales to school, the Office of Student Development and the Gales Activity Board organized a fun-filled week of entertainment. Comedian Jordan Carlos from MTV's Guy Code stopped by campus to do what he does best and make students laugh. His visit turned out to be a huge success as students stayed the whole night laughing, meeting, and interacting with the TV star. Chris Cowley, a finalist from NBC's The Voice, put on a concert in front of Cornelia Hall. He performed songs from the hit TV show, musical covers, and his new singles. His performance turned out to be a huge hit. Iono's annual coffee house returned this week and there was no shortage of talent. ICTV's Brandy Gonzalez has more on the story. I'm here at Spelman Hall in the Vitanza Dining Commons at annual talent show Coffee House. Coffee House is an event sponsored by the Office of Mission and Ministry and is a great way for our fellow Gales to showcase their many talents. We spoke to a performer who is also a member of Mission and Ministries. Coffee House happens once a semester and what it basically is is it's a showcase, uh, almost like a talent show, for Iona College students to come through and either play a song, uh, recite a poem, or showcase any talent they have that they want to show to the student body. Is Coffee House an important event for Mission and Ministries? Coffee House is one of Mission and Ministries' biggest event. Uh, we get a huge crowd, and it's an awesome time, and everybody seems to love it and to take away a lot from it. As usual, Coffee House had a great turnout and amazing performances. We hope to see you next semester for the next Coffee House. And new faces, you're welcome to come. This has been Brandy Gonzalez reporting for ICTV. Thanks, Brandy. In other entertainment news, this past month, a slew of inappropriate and provocative pictures of A-list celebrities from Jennifer Lawrence to Kate Upton were leaked online, without the star's knowledge. The celebrities seem to be victims of an iCloud breach, and federal authorities are still unaware of who exactly hacked into their accounts. Both Jennifer Lawrence and Kate Upton have confirmed that their images are authentic. However, stars like Ariana Grande disproved that her images were real. The incident is a federal crime and an invasion of privacy. I went around campus to ask students about their thoughts on the leak. Um, I feel like it's really messed up. Those were private pictures. They were meant to be private, not for everybody else to see. I think it's very inappropriate and it should never have happened. I heard that some of the celebrities were underage and it shouldn't have happened at all. It's very sad. Um, a lot of people look up to those figures because they're famous and stuff. So I feel like they should be more careful and um, to really think about what they're doing. That's it for this week's entertainment news. Until next time, I'm Raul Kathwar. There's a study out of Norway that shows students learn better from reading paper books and electronic texts. Iona's own associate professor of English and director of writing, Dr. Aaron Rosenfeld, and director of libraries, Rick Palladino, were quoted in a journal news article about their position on the issue. Inside Iona spoke to Palladino and asked students what they prefer. I think it's a very different experience, mm -hmm. whether it's online as opposed to the printed word. I, I tell people the, uh, the book is not dead. Um, it's, it's a different experience, the, you know, the, the feel, you're touching the book, the, um, if you're looking at an, an e-reader, it's a totally different experience. I prefer print 
mostly because there's like that certain feeling of when you like turn the pages you have like you're actually reading like the book it's like um there's a certain like authenticity to having a book as opposed to reading online i prefer reading in print um i think that reading on a screen is like bad for your eyes i don't like having the whole computer thing like i wouldn't like to hold an ipad and just scroll through the pages i like to flip them I prefer reading online because of the convenience of having everything right there in one, uh, you know, nook. But for now, I think uh, the printed word uh, still holds. That's all we have for this episode of Inside Iona. We hope you enjoy the new season. To keep up with what's going on at Iona College Television, please be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube page. And thanks to the TV Studio Production class for helping with the production of this episode. For all of us at ICTV, I'm Kyle Byrne. And I'm Chrissy Bookie. See you next time.